Hey, hello. Thank you for pressing play. My name is Free Tillman. Earlier this year, I talked with my guests for a series called Never Heard It, where we talked about Easy Does It by Easy E. Uh, you can go check that out if you haven't already. And in that interview, he told me that he had a few projects in the works for 2021. One of those was Why You Like This, which is a collaborative album he did with Portland artist Young Shirtman, which was released back in April. Uh, we also talked about a solo project he had coming. Well, that album has come to fruition with the release of What Are You Afraid Of? So here to talk to me about that project is the one and only Matt Randall. How's it going, man? Hey, what's up, Free Tillman, man? What's going on, brother? Great to, uh, great to talk with you again. Cool, cool. Um, so, well, I guess we'll just jump right into it. Um, you put out uh, Way Lit with Shardy earlier this year, and that project, for, for lack of a better term, it was a little more, I guess, jovial uh, than, than this project. This one is a little more serious. And I was wondering, like, did you put those albums, like, were you writing at the same time, like, both of those, or did you, like, set time apart to do one or the other? Yeah. Um, so, in the, it's funny how that worked out, because in the process of um, working on Way Lit, shirt was living with me so like that's kind of how we even started to uh get the album going in the first place but there were times where he might not want to create or he wasn't there you know what i'm saying so i just kind of started uh you know penning some things down i had got some mm. some of the beats early on some of those songs on the album like um when it all started um uh, the intro, some of all fears, spiritual warfare, all those songs. I had, I had those beats for a long time, but like something made me want to go back and, and write to them. And, and I was in the right space of mind, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I was just creating nonstop. So it was just a good time to go back to those and get them done. But like really after we dropped way lit is when I, I finished the album. Mm -hmm. um, I did like four or five more songs and yeah. It, it just came came to light. Uh, initially, I wanted to drop it back in June, but I haven't. I didn't ever say nothing about. It. I wanted to drop it on Father's Day um, because it was actually the first day of summer, so I wanted to drop it then. But it wasn't quite ready, so August six came, and um, you know that was a good date. And now here we are. Cool, cool. Um, so uh, I want to say, like, you have a bunch of dope producers on this on this album, um, but one of them I want to talk about one in particular is uh, Solomon. Uh, he yeah. produced uh, four tracks on this on this album, but um, he's also, in addition to a music producer, he's also listed as the executive producer on the album. So yeah. I wanted to know what that entailed, like how how that came about, how he's yeah, the um, executive producer. Yeah, man. So I think it it came about literally when um, I threw a, a album release slash birthday party because we dropped away lit on my birthday. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a little party there uh, at my, uh, my man Branch's Flight Lounge Cafe. Um, and we were there. Stu came. And I remember I was like, it's pretty, pretty messed up that night. But I was <laughs> feeling confident. And uh, I remember like we was talking like, man, we haven't like gotten any work done. I've known, I've known him for a long time. And we haven't really gotten anything tangible, like as far as like music that's been put out or whatnot, you know? in a long time. So uh, I had did a joint for his album that's coming out. So I was like, man, it'd be dope to involve you uh, on this album. And I was like, hey man, it'd be cool if you executive produced it. And when I say that, it's like, I wanted his ear. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I wanted him to tell me what I have, you know, if you liked what I have, uh, what could be worked on, you know, just being more open into allowing someone else to be a part of my process. Cause usually it's just me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, having a producer as the executive producer, I felt like it would just bring the album around more full circle and make it more full. Mm -hmm. So um, that's when he was like, yeah, I want to do like four joints on there. So he sent me all those four songs, like maybe a week after that party. And then I just started knocking them out. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the album was done, I want to say like in May. So like... Mm -hmm. From the time me and him linked up, that a month later, it was done, cool. and then it was just all about getting it mixed and thinking of different content pieces and thinking who I want to speak with about it, and, you know, all that that other stuff that comes yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, so on this album, uh, you do talk about a lot of things that um, maybe you didn't talk about before, like being insecure in relationships or your time mm -hmm. in Chicago or mm -hmm. not using protection when maybe you should have. 
Uh, this is this is your first uh, full length solo album since 2018. So I just wanted yeah. to ask, like, was there something in particular that happened between that time and now, aside from you know a global pandemic, uh, yeah. that that made you want to talk about those things that maybe you were afraid of to talk of talk about before? Yeah, I mean, uh, so I kind of started this journey um, with my first project, Alignment. Now it's 2015, and I decided, like, at, at first. I thought that was just going to be my one and done. I was going to put all of my thoughts and feelings into um, this one record and then be done with music. <laughs> you know, <laughs> pretty dramatic or whatnot, you know, way of thinking or whatnot. But I decided I wanted to kind of create a narrative, you know. So I did um, that next year. I did a project with Snugsworth called Libero, which means free. And I felt like I was freeing myself from the the topics I was talking about on alignment, you know, just struggling, like being a first time, you know, parent, struggling with things that were going on in my my mom and my grandma's house, you know what I'm saying? And just like finding different ways to, I guess, like vent. So then free, I freed myself from that only barrel. I was talking like more political stuff. A lot of things were happening with like Sandra Bland. Felt like I had to speak on it then. Took 2017 off. But towards the end of 2017 is when I started working on Art of Allowing. You know, I was like, all right, it's time to, like, make an album. And I wanted that to be my debut album. So September 2018, I dropped that. And then I think it was, like, Thanksgiving, man, I, I decided I wanted to drop several projects in a year. So I, I remember I'd go on Instagram just announcing that I'm going to do four projects and whatnot. And I'm like, what am I doing? I, I didn't have anything done. But I decided pretty quickly i was like all right i'm just gonna work with one producer hopefully they send me a pack that has like four or five solid joints or whatever and by grace of god that happened so i did uh calhoun dropped that january 1st with elliot did uh aries ep with uh, my man nappy notes who's from pennsylvania that came out april then i did uh three song ep called Say What You Feel that dropped in July and that was produced uh, by Kiel and Dart and Cali and then I did the uh, the band project Stress with uh, Harvey Bird, Bassus and Sir Nye, my DJ mm -hmm. and I was like fuck started a band you know I was just like <laughs> trying to be all over the place and have a bunch of different creative outlets and um, you know the pandemic hit with um, you know 2020 but uh, you know that got me and Shirley working, did our album, and then created mine. And mm. still working. I'm working on more shit. Like, I just feel like I'm at this place now where I'm able to create constantly, but it's actually good stuff. So, mm. you know, it's just a blessing to be on this run. I've always tried to mm. find a creative zone, and I think I found it now. So. Cool. Uh, so... But let's talk about the the actual album. Uh, on the on the intro, I just want to talk about like where does that 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 they talk about like not being afraid to chase your dreams. Basically, is what, yeah. what it's about. So where does that come from? What is that? Um, is that a conversation that you had, or is that did you pull it from something else? Or you know, it's crazy because like the intro is basically me holding myself accountable. So mm. like I'm, I'm like essentially shouting at myself. You know, what are you afraid mm. of? What are you made of? You know, like those first four bar, those bars are like me asking myself what am I afraid of, challenging myself, and then like you know what I'm saying nights I stayed up didn't really say much. Like, like I'm kind of giving the listener like a, a inside of how my mind works and stuff like that. You know, this music stuff. I love music, but at the same time, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's it's put a lot of stress and burden on my life because like mm. when you go, you 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 have a dream and you have a drive for something you go so hard for it. And then when things don't move as fast as you want them to put you in a depression, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I go back and forth with, with, you know, how, how I feel about this. So like, you know, I kind of speak from a place where, you know, just a real human, real relatable perspective of like, what is, I, I don't want to, uh, I guess, hide the process. You know, a lot of people, mm mention they'll they'll be like yeah this happened and yeah i blew up overnight but that's not how it works you know so i just pride myself on on speaking on the real experience of a person that's actively pursuing a, a career in music is hard you know this is it's very uh a difficult thing to do but you know it, it's uh a drive of mine and i i want to be someone known as someone that wants to 
keep continuing what I love doing and getting better at it. And I feel mm. like with my whole journey thus far, you can hear the growth in each and everything I do, not even just project wise, but song wise, you know, I'm just getting more comfortable and, and letting go of, you know, fe any fear I have, you know, that's mm -hmm. why I felt like, what are you afraid of is a great title. And it's like, I'm at a place in my life where I'm asking myself that question a lot and I'm just breaking down barriers and, and things that might've uh, plagued me before, you know, and I'm just living more free. Yeah, who who is that uh, talking at the beginning of? Kobe that, Bryant. Oh, Kobe. that's Kobe. I didn't even yeah, know that. So, like, you know, what's crazy is uh, it was the Hall of Fame when he was getting inducted to the Hall of mm. Fame. Oh, okay. A friend, a friend of mine had did this, like, like photo dump, video dump of Kobe Bryant, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just because they were, like, you know, he's getting enshrined, you know, and they just had all these different slides, and I just happened to click on one, and it was that interview mm -hmm. and like he was talking about fear and I was like, man, that shit is so dope. So I, you know, I found it. I clipped up that one and then I, I spliced when he said, what do you, well, what am I afraid of? That was from a different one. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of put that, put that there. And it's just, it was perfect. Cause initially I was going to start the album coming right in. What are you afraid of? What are you? Mm -hmm. But, but I just felt like um, those words were, just so strong and and like the the intro is the thesis i feel like of your album man yeah so i feel like i summed everything up in that track you know and then i just let the rest of the album unfold with with things you know insecure and and and, and like spiritual warfare is about me like you know struggling with with my belief you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying um you know just a lot of different things find your dream all these things so it's i just found different ways to uh, break fear down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I want to talk about some of the the features that you have on this on this album. And, and number yeah. one, I want to talk about is uh, on up to you. Mm -hmm. You got West Side Boogie. So mm -hmm. please tell me how that came about. So when I mentioned uh, I did the Say What You Feel EP, uh, those are his his producer and his engineer, and I've mm -hmm. known them for a long time. Just and I've never like I'm I'm one of those people that. I never publicize it, but I know a lot of people that know mm -hmm. people in the industry and like, you know, cause honestly that doesn't benefit me in any way. Like, yeah. it's just like, it's cool to know. And I've had interactions and brush ups with legends, people that are coming up, like all sorts of little, little things that, you know, it's, it's cool to think about, and, you know, something to tell your kids about one day or whatnot. But um, that was a situation where I had did that record um, way back in December initially that almost was on the way lit and Shirty never wrote a verse to it uh, <laughs> and uh, like we came up with the verse and the hook that night so all that had been done since December and I just remember I had it I sent it to a couple artists that I won't name you know y'all should have got on it but whatever it's cool mm -hmm. respect. <laughs> uh, but like I remember I was like sitting there and I was like man I'm gonna just like try it you know i just thought i was like who would be good on here and then i was like fucking let me just like let me just put in this call you know i've never like asked them for anything mm -hmm. you know other than shit let's work you know what i'm saying let's be cool uh but then i was i just hit dart and i was like hey man i got this record that i think boog would sound good on he's like bet send it over um i sent it to him they were in atlanta I sent it over at like 6.30 and they sent it back at like nine o'clock that night. And I was like, wow. wow, you know? And I and he really killed it and he did everything I thought he would do. You know, I mm. think it's like when you do songs with people that have a status, I think it's really important to like meet them where, where they're at and just mm. like, you know, I was just about finding the right record. It was funny cause like I actually hung out with him. Uh, I don't know, it was like 2017, 2018. He was on a tour with Joey Badass and uh, Buddy. And they were here, we we're backstage, and like I was getting, I got pretty faded that night. <laughs> and my boy Hash, he told me like that next day, he was like, Yeah, man, he, you remember what he said he wanted to do a song with you? I was like, No, what? <laughs> so I was just like, Fuck, why did I like, why did I get so faded like that? I wish I could remember that. But it's just funny how like, you know, things come full circle, you know, mm -hmm. found the right record. Got him on there. He sent it back real quick. So, yeah, you know, shout out to Westside Boogie, man. He did his thing. Shit was dope. 
Yeah. All right. And, and an, another feature that you have on there is is the one only Knox. Uh, yes. You got you got him on the hook for uh, uh, when it all started. So yeah. how was that like a natural thing? Like, did he ask to be on it? Did you ask him? Did it just <laughs> like what? Yeah. How did that come it's about? It's funny, man. Yeah. So basically, like you know uh, where that came from was. I, and Knox I, is your uh, son for anybody that doesn't. Yeah, yeah, doesn't so, yeah, know my yet. son exactly. And Knox Randall that's my guy. Um, so basically, what happened was, I'm in the car like I am right now, and and I was just driving around to the album. I listen to it every day because I believe it or not, I write while I'm in in motion because you know mm. I'm in traffic a, a lot of the day. So I, like I'm writing, thinking of things. So I'm playing the album, and I hear him in the back seat, man. And he he's humming along with everything. He's like, he catches melody. Like I hear him back there singing the songs, you know, like mm-hmm. he's like he learned the hook for up to you singing it back there. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. So like I heard him just doing that and I was like, man, I'm gonna like try it one day. I was like, hey man, I got this song if you wanna if you wanna try it, you know what I'm saying? If you wanna mm-hmm. sing along. So I just uh, told him what to do. And yeah, we just put the headphones on and he, he caught it. I didn't have to nudge it over or anything. That's why I was proud. Like he, even though it was one of those things where he's listening and then it comes mm. on, and he's like, la, la, la. like it, it was funny. <laughs> you know, like I got the video of him where he's just like, la, la, la. I was like, hey, but he still caught it. So I was like, really proud moment. And then he, like, he starts getting the extra. And he was just like, man, what can I say? Words? <laughs> what I learned how to read some words. <laughs> So, you know, it was just one of those things where it, it was special, you know, just add mm-hmm. another layer. Cause I think I had did I had did my la la's at first. So mm-hmm. that's why he was singing along with it. And I was like, man, it'd be dope if he was on there. Mm-hmm. You know? So yeah, like it was that's a great song. Shout out to Saint, who like I started making music with. Uh he kind of stopped making music. And it was funny because I actually got four bars from him. And I was like, cool, I'll take them four bars, bro. So, and he's my son, <laughs> God dad, so that's cool. And then Sela from uh he's from Texas, but he lives in Seattle. Mm-hmm. I got him on my album twice because he's just that damn good. Yeah. Uh and he he killed it too. So like, yeah, it's just a great song produced by Kid Specs um from from LA. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. Not, 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 not gonna be spitting on your next album. Man, that's what I'm saying. You're gonna give like, him a sixteen. He, he went- <laughs> on AOC, he went from talking like I had him talk on like two songs to he doing he doing a little layer. So yeah, next thing he might he might be on he might be on some shit. <laughs> never know, you never know. Uh, another one, another feature is uh, I, I'm not familiar with him, but Brill. Um, yeah, well, I'm saying about it. like he like in the studio with them right now. Yeah, uh, he I mean he killed his bro. He also he he, he appeared on the last album too. He appeared on the. Uh, Way lit too, or uh, was it? Um, yeah, he was on Way Lit. Uh, yeah, exactly. He, he was, was on. Was you know the vibes. Song, he's on. Yep. You know the vibes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Brill, man. He's, um, yeah, you he's... know, him and Milk. They they're part of a group called Low B. I've been fans of Low B for a long time. Mm. Um, and like you know, they they're doing, they have their group, but then they do solo shit on the side. And I don't know. I just had the, uh, the Say About Me record, and I just heard him on there, and mm. like yeah, when he sent the verse over, I was like, man killed it <laughs> yeah killed absolutely it. you know we performed it at a uh, thesis for the first time mm-hmm. back in july i just wanted to get like a little temperature check from the crowd you know get people hyped for the album so mm-hmm. it was dope to have him you know like he has some vocal cord surgeries and shit you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and like you know i'm just happy that the man can make music still talk let alone so mm-hmm. you know yeah. it, this was uh just great to have him on there you know what i'm saying we have, got a bunch of home team people on there you know so it's dope yeah there's a there's a bunch of uh, great songs on here. Uh, one one I want to talk about is uh, trepidation. Um, yeah. There, there's one line when you say uh, didn't know my dad, but yeah. knew he was proud of the dad that I be that I am, which is mm-hmm. a take that I'm not sure I've ever heard anyone quite take that that uh, that avenue. Most of the time it's I don't know my dad, I hate my dad. Generally, uh, yeah. that's usually how that goes. But like, not only did oh, you man. say, but you said you feel like he would be proud of the dad that you are, bro. I appreciate you asking this because like, uh, you know, that could, uh, it could easily be taken out of context. Mm-hmm. So for some context, I, I knew my dad, I mm-hmm. met my dad. I've, I've been around him several times, but when I say I didn't know him, it's mm-hmm. because I didn't know him. I met him when I was nine years old, um, you know, for circumstances, whatever. Uh, but then 
he almost immediately was diagnosed with cancer and he had prostate cancer and it spread. So, and I, back then I was just so shy because I grew up a certain way with my, my mom and my grandma. Mm-hmm. So then I just realized I have this whole like African-American side of my mm-hmm. family that I'm just like, I got brothers, I got a sister, I got like all these cousins, uncles, aunties, and it was just so overwhelming that I was just that, what are you afraid of? I mm-hmm. was afraid to like, I never had a heart to heart talk with him. Mm-hmm. And like for him to explain to me what happened or why he wasn't there, I didn't never have that. So the reason why I say I didn't know my dad because I didn't know him well enough. Mm-hmm you know, like, like I should have. And I feel like, you know, if I, if I wasn't so afraid to, to ask or, but I was 10, I was nine, 10 years old, I was, was a yeah, young yeah. kid. So it was just one of those things where I didn't know him well enough, but I know mm-hmm. who he is and I never want to disrespect him. You know, I miss my pops more than words can say, you know, I mm-hmm. wish that's why I go so hard as being a parent because mm-hmm. it's, it's often uh, happens where, where the, if your father wasn't involved in your life, you kind of fall in that path and you kind mm-hmm. of become someone that's not close to their kid. But I wanted to, I wanted to break that cycle down. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. I wanted to, to net, I didn't want my son to ever question who I am. I never mm-hmm. wanted him to wonder what I looked like, how I was. Those are things that I felt. So, and, and I feel like when I said, but I know he's proud of the dad that I am because he, what was a great father you know what i'm saying like he raised he raised my brothers who who like took they they came and they raised me they mm. looked out for me whenever i need you know what i'm saying so obviously he did a great job and i hear nothing but positive things about my dad you know he's a good man so you know what i'm saying that's why i said that it's like you know and and you're right no one does they don't really approach it like that yeah. but, you know i felt like it was important for me to say that because you know, I just feel like there are certain people up in heaven pulling strings for me, man. I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's not him, it's, it's my grandfather who died a month after he died. Mm-hmm. And it, like, really rocked my world. I was about to enter into high school. So, like, it really changed my perspective of, like, this whole man thing, you know? Mm-hmm. So I struggled trying to figure out what it was to be a man because you need that that male support. You know, so I leaned heavy on, on my brothers and stuff and, and my friends just being around them. And I had friends who were fathers early, you know. So, you know, I just look at, I just pull from all sorts of angles for inspiration. So, you know, that that line was definitely important. And I feel like, you know, I just didn't want my family to be uh, misconstrued, that, mm-hmm. misconstrued that line. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm glad that you asked that. It's not a shot at my pops ever because I talk mm-hmm. about uh, when it all started. You know, I remember when it all started back in the day when me and my, me and my, my pops first party, you know what I'm saying? Mm, it's yeah. like, you know, like that, that, you know, I felt a void. That's why I say I felt a void like postpartum. Like postpartum is like when you, after you give birth, you know, for a woman, after she gives birth, she could fall into a depression. So like, I definitely fell into uh, this, this hole where I was just, and, and I, there's a void that was left. So, you know, that line is real heavy. So I appreciate mm-hmm. you asking about that. Yeah. Did, did that have anything to do with you initially wanting to put it out on Father's Day? Or was that just a coincidence? You know, it's crazy because it, it just like it. T- what I was doing was um, with with Libero and Art of, Allow- Art of Allowing, I was dropping them the first day of each season because mm-hmm. they're called Equinoxes. Mm-hmm. So it was a tribute to Knox, right? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to keep that going that trend going but like you know having Stu in my corner he he helped me secure a little situation with Kenny Fresh and and like we helped he helped like push the album and you know all those things wouldn't have happened if I didn't like listen to someone else and take time to get it mixed and mastered yeah. by someone else you know what I'm saying so you know I, I wanted to drop it and I was a little disappointed because I wanted to keep that trend going but you know mm-hmm. I felt like ultimately it was the best thing to do to push it back and push it uh drop it when it was ready um, so yeah, you know, it would have been dope to definitely put some out on Father's Day. Maybe that's something I do down the line. Cool. Uh, and also, that's another song with uh, with Selah on the hook, who was definitely giving yeah. me Marvin Gaye vibe, bro. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So like, when yeah. he sent that over, initially it was funny because like I did I I did my vocals on another beat, 
but Solomon like reproduced that song. He re- he reproduced trepidation, and he reproduced um, uh, let's have fun while we're here. Mm. So those are two songs I had them on different beats, but he heard them was like, bro, send me the vocals. <laughs> I, I got so like you know initially I had the verse and the hook already, but it it fit, and then like. Uh, there was space and, and Melk was over one day and we're like, fuck it. Yeah. You get on here too. He wrote his verse right there, killed it. You know? Yeah, Melk Mil- killed his like verse too, my, yeah. All my features, like, they all fit the theme of the album. They all came through for me, didn't slack. It was a beautiful thing. Hmm. So on, at the at the beginning of, of the song, uh, Find Your Dreams, you say, uh, you do kind of a Jay-Z thing where you say the MBG uh, broke up. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's a new beginning global, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So can you tell yeah. me about like that situation? Yeah. So basically, man, you asked her all the good questions. <laughs> See, I knew, I knew you would. Uh, so man, so basically, man, what happened was I, I, you know, a couple years ago, NBG was like a big collective. You know, I wanted to be on some Wu-Tang shit. Mm. So I, I felt like the best thing would do, to do would just be, I recruited people from like all different types of crews. Oh, shoot. My bad. Uh, I recruited like all these different people and like they all just kind of was fucking with, with what I stood for and what it stood for. And we, I felt like we were doing like, you know, it was trending in the right direction. Then, you know things happen people want to go off do their own thing or or you know arguments happen fallouts happen so you know that was kind of me like because people ask me from time to time what happened and and like why is it that you're like basically the flagship only person right now Mm. uh it's because i was like you know i i felt like it was a good time to reset it basically bro it's just essentially like me telling people you know for for anyone that asked you know what i'm saying it's like mbg break up now every day i wake up somebody mm. got a problem with glove it's like like it was it was kind of like a uh overview of what's happened it's been a couple mm. of years since since like some of those relationships were uh i guess not unreconcilable maybe it'll happen at some point i, mm. I don't want to forecast and never say never but um you know, it was just a thing where I felt like I had to shed light on it a little bit. And, you know, I kept it moving at that. But mm. MBG is never going to die because that's something I created. Mm. It's more of a lifestyle brand. You know, it's something that me and my friends that don't even really make music. I just happen to be like the guy that really loves music. So mm. MBG is a represent- representation of us. You know what I'm saying? So it's never going to die, you know, in mm. that regard. But like as far as having a bunch of people on the label, you know, like I, I might not do it like that. You know, I got a couple of people and, and they'll be dropping soon, but you know, I, th- I think I just need to keep it more contained, mm-hmm. you know, and, and like, but I appreciate that time period though. And it was good memories and everything like that. So, you know, I love to everybody that was involved, but we just moving forward. Cool, cool. Oh, so let's talk about the, the album cover. What was the decision to have you smiling on the cover? All right. So basically what happened was, um, the house that I grew up in uh, was tore down earlier this mm. year uh, in March. So like my, my, uh, what I told my, my boy, Rob Lewis, he's designed all of the album covers, like the, for the albums, not, not mm. the EPs, not the way lit, but like for my solo projects, he's done mm. every single one. So I reached out to bro and, you know, just trying to think of like what we are going to do. Uh and then he was like, he hit me one day. I was like, bro, like, let's just do a photo shoot. I, I think like this album should be a picture with you on it in some way. So we went and took pictures. I was like, all right, let's go. Let's go to uh, where the house was. So like we took pictures like in the like the wreckage and, and the mm-hmm. rubble and everything like that. Took pictures there. And then I remember we went off of Willamette. And there's this view like where you could see like the city in the background. So I took some of those pictures, like pictures there too. But like there was this bush. I don't know why the fuck. Like he was just like, bro, <laughs> let's get you up in the bush, like the Homer Simpson meme where he just, yeah. you know, he's yeah. like, let's get you up in the bush and like like cheesing, like you just kind of like, you know, what I'm saying like let's let's get you on mm. there doing that. And I was like. All right, well, shit, fuck it. Like, you know, that wasn't part of the plan, but let's do it. Mm. And then that's how things happen sometimes, you know? Yeah. And I feel like the album cover represents 
that monkey getting off my back or that 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 weight that whatever was on me you know what i'm saying it's like me releasing that and smiling because you know a lot of people say like man you like you haven't been smiling much you, mm-hmm. i hadn't had much to smile about so and i just feel like it's such a dope juxtaposition because i feel like what are you afraid of people are gonna think like, oh here you go being emo again mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, hey, here we go it's gonna be serious so like the album cover just like makes brings that that lighthearted, like I, mm-hmm. I made it. I did. I I saved my family. I got them out mm-hmm. of that house. What that which was overrun with fucking rats. Like mm-hmm. it was crazy, bro. So like you know, I had to put all that out there, and it was uncomfortable asking for help. But you know, it was very important for me to show the progress, show progress. You know, so that album cover is just like me with sheer joy. Like I I did it. I accomplished like my biggest goal. Cool. So, you know, it's it's, it's, it's a great album cover, man. I think it's just like, it just, that's what I want to be. My my goal Mm. is to be more happy. Mm. So, cool. All right. So, before I let you go, is there anything that I missed? Anything else you want to talk about with the album? Um, Man, bro, appreciate you, man. I, you know, I reached out to you. I felt like you'd ask great questions. And I, again, I'm not, (laughs) you know, I'm not disappointed, bro. Can't wait for this to go live. Um, shit, man. Uh, if y'all haven't heard it, what are you afraid of? Now, is there going to be any merch? Spotify? Any merch uh, or any? I'm gonna do, is... Yeah, I'm going to do a merch line. I still got a lot of content. I'm going to do like visuals, dropping a documentary. Like a lot of things are coming. Uh, and I'm already working on shit, man. Uh, start this new collective called Home Team with Brill, Milk, Mal, London, Shirty, Manny Monday and uh, some other cats. So we're working on music and I'm about to actually go back in there and get going on it. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, that's coming too. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep working, bro. You all know, right. Staying safe, sure. staying out the way. Yeah. All right. So what are you afraid of? It's stores now everywhere. Go check it out. It's definitely one of my favorites of the year so far. Thank um, you, bro. So uh, thanks, man. Thanks for doing this. And I'll yeah. talk to you later. Man. Peace, bro. Peace. It's my Issa Ray. I feel like I play a keep away Pull up fresh on her like yesterday If we don't talk every day, yeah, I feel away I'm insecure I'm insecure I'm insecure I'm insecure yeah. Where's my Issa Ray? I feel like I play a keep away Pull up fresh on her like yesterday If we don't talk every day, yeah, I feel away I'm insecure I'm insecure I'm insecure I'm insecure. First step is admitting right. I don't like niggas around you. I don't. Yeah, something they sit and ride. But I'm so glad that I found you. So it's so difficult reaching.